updates. We just have a we just have a few company updates. So um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the morning Zoom. My name is Lydia Kyle. Um, I, I don't do this Zoom super often because it's uh, it's four in the morning. So um, getting up for this Zoom is a tough one for me. Even with Thrive, I am not a morning person. But you know what? It motivates me to show up and be a good leader. And that's why I have done this Zoom several times this month. So um, like I was just saying before we started recording, we're getting ready to go into not only Christmas this week, but then right after that, we're going into the new year. And so it's incredibly important for us to get organized and be prepared for what's coming because it can feel chaotic. And sometimes it's a good chaotic and sometimes it's a bad chaotic. And it really just depends on which way the wind blows that day. Um, but getting organized makes it much more likely for you to succeed. So um, before we get started, we're going to do our morning gratitude um, you guys, gratitude is one of those things that it doesn't matter what posture you take for it. You might be the kind of person who writes it down in a journal. You might be the kind of person that goes into prayer. You might be the kind of person that, um, you know, has your affirmations written on your mirror and you recite them every morning. But practicing some form of gratitude every day um, especially in the morning, really just sets up a posture for the day that I think otherwise we can't really attain later in the day. Um, I know for me, um, I'm a mom and I things things are crazy. By the end of the day, I'm done. I'm, I'm overstimulated. I'm, I'm worn out. I'm kind of cranky. Like, thank goodness for Thrive. I don't know what it would be like without Thrive, but um, you know, I can't sit down at the end of the day and have the posture of, oh gosh, I'm so thankful that, you know, my house is a disaster and go, oh, gosh, I'm so thankful that I have this sink load of dishes to do. And oh gosh, that laundry pile is just so beautiful. Um, you know, that's very hard to do at the end of the day, but if you do it first thing in the morning, it allows you to sit and prepare yourself to go into the day with a more grateful posture. And I think that's something that we can all benefit from. So go ahead and just take a few minutes. Um, we'll just take maybe two or three minutes. Uh, if you are a journaler, then journal. If you're someone who does prayer, do prayer. Um, or maybe just sit and think about what you're grateful for this morning. And, uh, and then we'll go, we'll go forward with company updates, but just take a minute to do your gratitude. I'm always scared to drink my tea out of this cup because it's one of those insulated ones. So it'll like stay hot for like 12 hours. I don't know how many times I've singed my tongue on it. All right, you guys. So, oh wow, my contacts were all sorts of wonky. Hold on. Well, oh, I'm a mess this morning. You guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Um, okay, so Shannon and I talked last night, and I think the only company updates that we have, because Double Triple Fast Starts ended last night, um, so Double Triple Fast Starts ended last night, and payout for Double Triple Fast Starts is going to be tomorrow, which um, those of you who still haven't figured out, um, this contact is going to drive me nuts. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm kind of a hot mess this morning, so just bear with me, please. Um, those of you who have not figured out what double triple fast starts are yet I really 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 encourage you to find a teammate or a leader who you feel can explain it to you um because and, and I know it's over it's done but it will come back and I remember for my first year and a half in the business um my first year and a half in the business, I, I, I didn't get it. I, I, they would announce double, triple fast starts. And I was like, well, I have no idea what that is and it looks confusing. So I'm not even going to try. And, and I mean, that's kind of shameful for, to admit now looking back at all of the opportunities that I missed out from, but I remember that, um, 
I remember the moment that I realized what double, triple fast starts were, and I realized how I could work that promotion. The first time I did it, I got like $5,000 in bonuses. I mean, not all double, not all double, triple fast starts are huge like that, but still, even this time, you know, it, it was a great, it was going to be a great payday tomorrow for a lot of people. Um, so if you, if you haven't figured out double, triple fast starts, I really, really recommend not just blowing that promotion off or allowing yourself to get in the mindset of like, oh, that's scary and complicated. And it involves math. Like it really doesn't, you just need to get to work when they announce it. Um, so anyway, double, triple fast starts is over and that payout will be tomorrow. So congratulations to everybody who is going to have an amazing payday tomorrow. Um, the thing that is still going on is the PPA board. And, um, you guys, that PPA board is not super high. Um, you know, sometimes when we have PPA boards, they get crazy. Like, I mean, you'll have people with like $20,000 worth of volume in two weeks. And like, it's just, I mean, it's nuts, like good for them, but like, holy moly, like you gotta, you gotta hit your stride really fast and you gotta keep it up the whole time. Um, this PPA board is not super high, so it's pretty attainable. Um, I think I have $1,700 worth of, of new PPA and yesterday I was on, I was on the bottom spot of the, the PPA board. I've been higher throughout this, um, you know, middle of the road on the PPA board. But yesterday um, I, I checked and I've got like 17, this really just like $1,700. And I was the bottom of the PPA board. The top of the PPA board, I think is 5,000. So, I mean, oh my gosh go, go sign up some new promoters, go sign up some new customers and you could end up on that PPA board. And that's a huge confidence booster. Like this is the first time that I've ever been on a PPA board for any extended period of time. And even though I was on the bottom spot yesterday, I logged in and I was like, dang, I'm super proud of myself for being on that PPA board. So it's a huge confidence booster to see those trackers go up. Um, you know, don't just look at it in your cloud office and be like, oh, well, I only have $100 of PPA. That's great. You have $100 of new PPA this month. Go get another $100 of new PPA. Um, so the PPA board is still going. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the term PPA, I'll just mention it very briefly. PPA is new ordering customers or promoters. So first time orders from anyone. It doesn't matter if they've had a customer account for eight months and they finally decide to order today. That is considered PPA because it is the first time that they've ordered. Okay. So when we talk about getting two new customers to thrive for free, that's two new people, two new PPA. Okay. And whatever the amount it is, is whatever their order is, but that's what PPA is a first time customer or promoter order. If a customer switches to promoter, and they've already ordered as a customer, their promoter order will not count for new PPA because they've already ordered once in the system. It is literally their first ever order. Okay, so moving on. Um, we have two new products. We have, well, technically we have three. Um, we have the Peach Mango Activate, which I'm so excited about you guys. That's an amazing flavor. We have never had a peach product. Peach is a huge product flavor. Okay, like I'm one of those people, maybe it's just me because I love peach, but when I saw peach, I was like, oh, I'm going to sell the far out of that. Like, I mean, oh my goodness, I'm, I can sell that to everybody, their mother and their dog. Like peach, peach is an amazing flavor. Um, so we have a peach mango activate. We have, especially going into the new year, like you guys, like you want to hit your fitness goals and you need to get away from energy drinks. Like here you go, here's your peach mango activate. We have the camo DFT. Um, a lot of people are confused on the camo DFT. They're like, I don't understand what it is or why it's different. The camo DFT is technically an ultra. Okay. But what they did is they messed with the proprietary blend and they made it varying amounts. So it's technically the same ingredients, but it has a little bit more of this and a little bit less of that and a little bit more of that. And they just fudged it a little bit to make it different. Um, the energy on it is amazing. Um, and, and the appetite control on it is amazing. Uh, there's a reason why, like, for example, Brittany strike is one of those people who she can wear, like she can wear 
TAC and Black Label and Duo Burn all at the same time and still feel like she needs a Red Bull. Okay, but she can wear that camo DFT only and feel like she has energy all day long. Okay, so they tweaked the formula. <coughs> they tweaked the formula just a little bit, but it's still good for those people who are caffeine sensitive. I'm one of those people. So I love that DFT. Plus it looks super cool. Um, so we have the camo DFT and those people who run an auto ship. Um, and honestly, you guys don't get, don't start a riot um, because nobody really understands like how they selected the rollout on this. But some people have access to the fudge brownie shake. Not everybody. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know who. I don't know what the logic is. Some people believe that it's for auto ship. Um, and you have to order directly through the link. Other people are like, wait, I ran an auto ship and I still didn't get it. So I don't know why, I don't know how, but I do know that Fudge Brownie is at least in the middle of a rollout of some sort. So maybe we'll all get it this week. Maybe we'll all get it in the new year. I don't know. Oh, and Shannon, I just thought of something else that we forgot to talk about last night. Ultimate Thriver, you guys. Ultimate Thriver registration is gonna be on the 27th. So that's Sunday, don't worry. It's just registration, okay? Registration is literally just going in and saying, my name is Lydia, I'm going to be doing Ultimate Thriver, click the button, submit. Like you don't need to upload photos right now, you don't need to do anything like that. Registration is just going to be that. You're registering to do Ultimate Thriver. And my guess is we'll have until probably like the 5th or something of January. There's a pretty big window. It's not like it's a moving target. Like it's a pretty big window to get yourself set up. Um, Ultimate Thriver, if you are a team leader of any sort, like I don't care if you have five customers and one promoter, like you are a team leader. What I did last year was I created a group chat for Ultimate Thriver. So everyone on my team, whether they were a promoter, whether they were one of my promoter's customers, whether they were one of my customers, I created a group chat for Ultimate Thriver and we had so much fun. Um, I did like small giveaways. So, or I would do special discounts, like, you know, all of your guys' auto ships this month. I want you to go and add Sculpt and I'm going to send you um, $20 in credit so you can get Sculpt for $10. Because, you know, why would you want, why wouldn't you want Sculpt when you're working out? Right. Um, you know, I did, I got on Amazon and I got like a $5, you know, giant water jug and I did a giveaway. Everybody who uploaded their photos for the first day of Ultimate Thriver, who got their first photos submitted, went into a drawing for, for this water jug type thing. So you guys, it's not something that you, you just sign up and you kind of like turn people loose on. I think that's a missed opportunity. If you're going to do Ultimate Thriver, use it as an opportunity to build up your Thrive community and, it, and create a culture of encouragement and excitement for people who, um, who are in it. Who's allowed to sign? I just, I lost a contact. So I literally can't read anything. I got to go put it back in. Shannon, can you answer that question while I put this contact back in and then I'll get started? As far as sign up, anybody can sign up, but you do have to have a auto ship order every single month for the time that they're doing it. There's three different age groups. There's three different prizes for each age group. And I even seen there's something additional, um, 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 some kind of other thing that they're doing. I don't have it in front of me. in front of me. I do apologize. I'll drop it in the comments with the replay. But Erica, anybody... I um, I will post it in all the team chats, guys. Uh, those who are in the other chats, I will send it to Shannon. I have it here on my phone. Awesome. All right. Okay. I have a contact in my eyeball. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Okay. So we're going to move on and we're going to get started talking about organization. You guys, um, and I'll have to turn my camera off for a little bit of this just because I need to look at my notes to keep myself organized. You guys, not everything that I do is going to work for everyone, but I'm going to, in the three years that I have been doing this, two years that I've been doing this very successfully, I, I have tried a lot of different organization. And the one thing that I have learned is when something works, use it. And when it stops working, don't be afraid to do something new, but have enough self-awareness that when it stops working, that you realize that it's not working anymore. 
Okay. Organization is like that. You may have a system that works for six months and then your team becomes so large that it no longer works anymore and you need to adapt and adjust. Okay. So I'm going to start from the beginning and, and then go up. So I'm going to start with the things that I did when I first started, when I had a, a fairly small team. Okay. I was still very organized. Even when I only had like two promoters, and a handful of customers, I was still incredibly organized. And then I'm going to kind of go up and then tell you guys what I'm doing now. Um, <clears throat> I did want to share with you guys. Um, I think the reason why organization matters is because, and, and I've heard of this happening before, where a, a, a team leader will be chugging right along, like maybe they're a solid 12k you know they're they're a solid 12k and then all of a sudden they sign up their dream promoter and you guys this can happen overnight okay we are literally all one person away from being a millionaire period one person they sign up that rock star promoter and and within two months they're an 80k they just went from 12k to 80k in two months and they have no idea how to manage that team because they weren't organized. They were just kind of flying by the seat of their pants. They had a consistent 12K team. Well, now they have an 80K team underneath them and they have no idea how to lead them because they themselves are not organized. And I have heard multiple people on Lisa's 200K Zoom that she does on Tuesdays say, I almost gave up. Like it freaked me out. My team grew so quickly and I was so disorganized and so disoriented that I, I essentially quit because it freaked me out. You don't want to be that person. Organization matters because when you hit your stride as a team leader, you don't want to have to get organized along the way. You want to already have a system in place so that as your team grows, you're already in a position to lead them. Um, and, and some of it is a crapshoot. Like I said, there have been things that I have done organizationally that they don't work. They certainly don't work for other people and they only halfway work for me, but I at least have a mindset of I need to remain organized and I need to lead from the front because at the end of the day, I still need to follow up with my customers. It doesn't matter if I have a team of people who are consistently going 40K every single month. It doesn't matter. I still have personal customers. I still need to follow up with people who are getting samples. I still need to reach out to people who have ghosted me. I can't just rely on my team to do their work. I have to rely on myself to get my work done and encourage my team at the same time. That requires organization and that requires systems. There is a book that I recommend every single one of you. And uh, it's actually on Spotify. I, I cannot, someone on my team found it. Um, it's on Spotify and it's a really good audio book. If you want to read it hardback, go for it. Um, on Audible, it's only five hours long. Um, and one of, like one of my teammates found it on Spotify. So you can search the title on Spotify and it like pops up as like a, someone recorded it and posted it as a podcast. Um, so yay for that person for pirating that, that Audible book for us. Uh, but it's called, um, it's called Atomic Habits, and it's by James Clear. If someone could put that in the chats for me, Atomic, like Atomic Bomb, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Like I said, it's only five hours long. Incredibly beneficial book. It, it, if you do anything, uh, no, clear, less in like, I see, I see clearly now, um, James Clear, um, it, uh, it's an incredibly beneficial book. So if you are going to do any self-development between now and the new year, you're going to listen to that book or you're going to read that book. Just like promise me, just be like, yes, ma'am. Got it done. Um, he has a great voice, so it's easy to listen to. Um, I remember we went on vacation and we were driving back from Yellowstone and I listened to it and I just like, I didn't stop. I just listened to it straight through and it was great. But essentially what he talks about is 
you can't change your whole life overnight. You need to start with small things. And I believe that's how organization goes. So it's just the little things. So little tiny habits that multiply into very large changes in your life. So little things like you wake up every morning and you make your bed. That is a positive habit. You wake up every morning and you drink half a gallon of coffee. That's a bad habit. It's negatively impacting you. And it's just a system of checks and balances of how many good little things can I do over and over and over and over and over again that are going to compound into big changes. And I believe that organization is something that falls into those atomic habits that are going to benefit and change your business for the better. So as far as self-development goes, that's your assignment is to do atomic habits. The other thing about organizations before I get into actual like physical hard things that I've done, um, I remember at one point, Lisa K. Fuller, and this was during, um, and I, I hate using this term, so don't, like, don't, nobody's allowed to use this term except for me. Um, last year, during the months of October, November, December, which a lot of people deem, you know, slower seasons, and I hate to do that because it's a mindset thing, but for me, last year, it was in fact that. OK, my team went 40K in September and then we didn't touch 40K again until like March. OK, so like it was it felt that way. And I remember sitting there going, oh, my gosh, what can I do? I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. And I went to Brittany's retreat in Texas at Chastity Marie's house. And Lisa K. Fuller was there and we were all sitting around the fire. and We were doing Kumbaya and uh, uh, Lisa was talking about like, it was like, she was talking to me. She didn't know she was talking to me. And she goes, you know, I hear people say all the time, like, Lisa, I don't understand why my business isn't growing. I don't understand why I can't re-rank. I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. And then I sit and talk to them and I ask them, oh, okay, well, are you doing, um, you know, are you doing follow-ups? Are you, yes, I'm doing follow-ups. Are you, are you posting to your stories every, yes, I'm posting my stories every day. Have you done a vision board? No, I haven't done a vision board. Well, then you can't say that you're doing everything. And that really, really spoke to me because I hate vision boards. I hate them. You can actually see mine from last year, right behind. Me. That's the first vision board that I ever did. I hate them. You guys, I didn't even like arts and crafts as a kid. Like literally as a kindergartner, I hated arts and crafts. I think they're dumb. That's just how I am. It's how my brain is wired. Okay. I can write you a 40 page essay in like two days. But if you ask me to do an art project, like bleh, vomit. Okay. Hate it. So when you ask me to do a vision board, I'm like, no, no, ma'am. I'm not going to sit down with my little magazines and my little scissors and my little stick of glue and make a vision board. But Lisa was talking right to me. And she's like, if you haven't done a vision board, you can't tell me that you've done everything because I've told you to do a vision board. And I was like, fine, I'll do one. So I did. I sat down with all my magazines and I made my vision board. And I was actually really proud of what I came up with. Did I love every second of doing it? No. No, but I'm glad that I did it. And I tell you what, there were things on that vision board that I accomplished in this past year that I don't think I would have had the ability to accomplish if I wasn't looking at them constantly. And they're big things. I mean, there's big things on there. And there's a lot of things on there that I didn't accomplish. But the reason why I'm telling you this is because I believe having a vision for your upcoming year is part of getting organized. So if you have not done a vision board, or updated your vision board. If you did a vision board in June and you're like, oh, I'm good. Like, I don't need to do a vision board. No, you need to do a vision board. Again, do another one, okay? If, if you're one of those people that needs to update it every five months, do that. But I'm just telling you before the beginning of the new year, you need to do a vision board. Um, I already did mine for this year. And again, I didn't necessarily enjoy it, but I like looking at it. And I like being able to look at the things that I put on there and go, yep, that's attainable. That's achievable. I am going to keep myself on track and organized to achieve those things. So vision boards are incredibly important for your organization. And I, I say this every time. Um, and uh, some people on my team have gotten their feelings hurt by this, but you guys, a vision board, I don't mean like three sticky notes on your mirror that have like new iPhone new house, new, like new Lamborghini, like that on a sticky note on your mirror is not a vision board. Okay. Stick figures, drawing stick figures on sticky notes are not vision boards. If, if your vision only deserves that much of your effort, it, it ain't a very good vision or you're not very committed to reaching it. 
okay? Like I said, I hate arts and crafts, but I make a beautiful vision board every single year because I know that my goals and my aspirations deserve to be pleasing to look at. And I need to visualize it. You know, I had someone on my team who one of their visions is they want to go around the country and they want to eat at all of these different restaurants. And they just had their name of the restaurant and what they wanted to order written down on a piece of paper. And so I told them, I want you to go online and I want you to print off a picture of the front of the restaurant. And then I want you to find that dish on their website, if you can, and print those things off and put the, like, I want you to look at it. I want you to look at that restaurant. I want you to look at that meal and, and see it as attainable. Like I want, I want you to like have this mouth watering sensation when you look at it, you know, just, you know, stick figures aren't enough. You guys, if it's a true vision, it deserves more of your attention. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So let's talk about some actual organization techniques that I have used in the past that have worked for me. So when I first started my organization system was just a note on my phone. Okay. And, and I have an iPhone, but, um, it was, it was just a note on my phone and I had different headings for, you know, who were my promoters because I I had a fairly small team. So who were my promoters? And then I had a list of names who had a mini And then I had a list of names who were first time customers. I always write down first time customers because I need to touch base with them. Okay. After their auto ship runs, I may not touch base with them every month. I, that's just how I am. Okay. It's just, I feel like people don't necessarily need me to babysit them, but a first time customer, I need to touch base with them. Did your order arrive? Was it okay? Was everything there? Because I have had people where I forget to follow up with them and they're like, no, I'm pissed because my sculpt was missing. And it was like, oh, if I had just followed up with this person like two days after their order would have arrived, this would have been resolved by now. But I forgot. Okay. So just, um, just, um, just like a list on my phone of all the names of people. And then I would just shift people's names around as they needed to. Um, And that was a very simple system, very simple system, but it kept me organized. I have seen people do the same thing on like a whiteboard and with sticky notes. So, so they'll have uh, different things on a whiteboard. So they'll have promoters, VIP. Okay. So maybe who's in their VIP period. And I actually think I saw this at Amber Manquist's house. Yeah, I think it was the Amber Amber Manquist house. So this is a 200K leader that uses sticky notes and a whiteboard to do this. Um, Very simple. So, and then she would have a list of customers and first time customers and, you know, but the sticky notes, she could just peel them off and move them around where she needed to move them around. So that's another way to do it that I think is a great way to utilize just a very simple list. Um, Okay. Just making sure that my poor husband didn't just walk into the bathroom naked. Um, I don't think they want to see that. Um, okay. So the next thing that I started to do is I was on a super Saturday training and this was at the point where, and you can start doing this now. I'm just saying that this is how things progressed for me. Um, I was on a super Saturday training And, um, they were talking about, um, organization and someone said, oh, well, I use a recipe box. And everybody was like, wait a second, what do you mean you use a recipe box? And she elaborated on this system of using a recipe box and note cards to stay organized. And I was like, this is the most genius thing I've ever heard in my life. So for a very long time, I used a recipe box system. And so this is what it is. So this is like a $5 recipe box off of. Amazon and it's full of note cards. And what I've done is I have made little tabs in my recipe box for various things. So I have mini experiences. I have first time orders. I have all of my auto ships. So who has an auto ship on the 5th, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th, the 25th. And then I have um, promoters. I have all of my promoters by rank. Each of them has a tab. And then I also have inactive customers and inactive or never ordered and inactive promoters. And essentially what I do is when I would sign someone up 
and this system evolved over time. So, I mean, what I did in the very beginning might've changed, but essentially what I did was, let me pull one out here. Um, I would, so this is someone, I actually need to move her. Um, so I would take a sticky note and I would write the person's name and I would also write down, cause I work mine and my husband's account. So I would write down whose account they were on. I would write down, you know, essentially what the first contact was, whether I sent them a mini experience, whether I, they were three-step order, three-step with burn, whatever. I would write down what that was. And then I would write down, uh, the other thing is this really helped me keep track of who I was sending thank you notes to, because I would write down when I sent them a thank you note. Um, so like I sent a skincare thank you note to Vicky. Um, and then I would write down the date so that I knew when I sent that and it helps me keep track of it. Um, and then, you know, every few, few days I would just go through my recipe box or like, say it was an auto ship. We had auto ships run last night. So, you know, if I was still using the recipe box system, um, more consistently, I would have gone in and I would have pulled out my auto ship section and I would have reached out to all of those people. It's just a very cut and dry way for me to stay organized. If you go into whether you're in Thrive to Survive or Building an Empire, you should be able to search in those groups recipe box. And I did a post saying how I organized my recipe box. Okay, I'm not going to go into that much detail today, but if you go search in Thrive to Survive or Building an Empire and just search recipe box, my name should pop up and there should be a post where I, I lay out in detail how I do it. Um, and so that's a system that's worked very well for me, especially if you're a visual person. Um, you know, for me, the reason why I started doing that is because I felt like every time I logged into my cloud office, I would get distracted just because it's on my phone and, you know, I would get pulled different directions and, oh, I need to follow up with that person. And then I would get distracted doing something else with the recipe box. It was something physical in front of me. And so I could do the task without getting distracted by the task. So auto ships, for example, and I would pull out those, those cards. I would go through all of those cards and it would be done. Okay. And, and that's, and plus they're very easy to move around. Okay. Say someone is not consistent with their auto ship, then I would just be able to move them to my inactive customers or say someone has a mini experience and then they turn into a first time order. Boom. I just move them section to section. So that's a very easy way to do that. Another system that has been very beneficial for me, and this is something that Megan Holcomb taught me, um, is using different emojis in your messenger. And I just use hearts and I use different colored hearts and different colored hearts mean different things. So for example, green hearts mean that I'm just talking to someone about Thrive. Like we haven't gone anywhere. Blue hearts mean that they got a mini experience. Yellow hearts mean they've got a first time order. <coughs> Orange hearts are my promoters. Um, but if you go into your messenger, you can click on someone's name and you can uh, set a nickname for them. Okay. And the reason why I use hearts is because they're, they're not weird. Like I'm not going to put a cucumber next to someone's name and have them be like, why did you just set my nickname to Shelby Cucumber? Like what? No, um, I, I still use their name because keep in mind, they can see this. Okay. So like, don't change their nickname to like stupid girl who won't ever order, but always wants to talk to me about discounts. Like don't change their nickname to that. Okay. Use their name and then put whatever emoji you want to next to it. But what this does is if I need to do, say we have a killer promo that comes out, like double, triple fast starts. Well, I can go in and I can just, just put an orange heart emoji in my search bar in my messenger and it's going to pull up every one of my promoters and I can reach out to every one of my promoters and let them know that I'm doing cash back on kits. Okay. So it's, it's very streamlined because you don't want to sit there and scroll and try to find someone. Um, I still keep a list of names and I'll talk about that next, but at least this system makes it very easy for me to do follow-ups. It makes it very easy for me to do reach outs. It makes it so that I can't forget about someone who got a mini experience. Um, because 
it's easy for me to go in and change someone's nickname if I don't have time to do a note card for them because I've got three little kids at home. So if I only have time to change their nickname, then I at least know that I've changed their nickname and I have some sort of filing system and even if I didn't have time to go and do a note card, okay? So the emoji system has been a godsend for me, especially since my team has grown. Um, it has created such a sense of organization for me in my messenger that I wish I would have discovered it a lot sooner. And again, don't use weird emojis. Don't use emojis that you're going to forget what they mean. Like just create a system in your, go to your notes and put the emoji and then put what it means, put the emoji and put what it means and stick to the system. Okay. Like don't, don't do weird things like, Oh, my mini samplers are koala bears. And you know, my first time customers are tigers. Like, no, just do something simple. Okay. Just do yourself a favor and do your customer a favor. Keep it simple. I have never had anyone ask me why I do it. I've never had a customer be like, why did you just change my name to Shelby Green Heart? Like, because they don't care. It's not weird. It's just a heart. Like they don't seem to care. Um, and if someone were to ask me, I would just tell them, oh, you know, I have so many people that I'm having conversations with that I like to make sure that I can find you again. Like my messenger is very chaotic. So I want to make sure that I can find this conversation again very easily. And this is how I do it. But like I said, I've never had anybody ask because I don't use weird emojis. It's just like kind of second nature. They're like, oh, cute. Like she changed my name to Shelby with a green heart, whatever. Um, so that is a good system to use. Um, the other system that I use, we've talked about that and we've talked about that. Oh, we've talked about that. And we've talked about that. Okay. So the other system that I've used is, I wonder if I can share my screen. Let me, just a second, let me see. So Rebecca Johnston taught me about this deal and it was super, super cool when she first told me about it and I still use it to this day. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, I don't think it'll let me. <clears throat> Dang it, I wish it would let me. Oh, try now, yeah. I made you co-host. Okay. Maybe it'll let me know because this is something that's really cool if people can. No, it still won't let me. Let me I think make I have to and see if that works. Okay. I mean, if I can't, then it's fine, but it is really cool. Try it now. Let me see. I can live stream to YouTube, but I can't share my screen um maybe nope okay well that's fine okay so there's an app called trello and again if you're a visual person um if you're a visual person i really recommend uh doing this because it will oh maybe this nope I thought I was being smart. Um, so the app is called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, and you can just get it in the app store and it's free. Um, essentially what it is, is it's like a, um, it's like a filing cabinet. So essentially it's, it's the recipe box. It's the recipe box. Um, go turn on screen share and settings. Okay, set meeting settings. I don't see screen share. That's the thing is I don't see. I think Lisa has it shut off because this is actually her account. Ah, see, okay, yeah, that, that would make sense. Um, but thank you, whoever that was. Um, I know it's possible to do, but I, I will, we won't worry about it. So essentially what Trello is, is the recipe box in an app. And what you can go in and is you can create your own universe, all right? So you can create boards, they're called boards, and you can have a board for anything. You, I used to have a board for post ideas. I used to have a, and then within post ideas, within the big board, I would have sub pages of interactive posts. 
um, thrive posts, business posts, you know, family posts, whatever. And you can have boards and you can move things around within the app. You can upload pictures, you can upload um, screenshots, you can do whatever you want. But the reason why the thing that I use it for the most is I use it to keep track of my people. So I have a board um, that's for my people and, and it's mostly just for my prospects. Okay. So I'm not keeping track of everybody in this app. You can do that if you want, but mine is specifically for prospects. So I have a board called prospects. And again, when you download this app, this will all become abundantly clear and you just play around with it and you make it your own. Um, it's very simple. It just takes a minute to figure it out. Um, it's a great organization tool. So I have a board called prospects and within prospects, I have different sections labeled different things. The ones that I use the most is I have a talking to page. The moment, literally you guys, before I even respond to them, if someone gets in my inbox and they're like, Hey, can you tell me a little bit about more about thrive? First thing that I do is I go to Trello and I put their name in talking to. Also, I put next to their name, where am I talking to them? Because they may have reached out to me on Instagram. They may have reached out to me on TikTok. They may have reached out to me on Facebook. I need to know where I'm talking to them because 95% of the time, I don't know who this person is. I don't know who they are. So it's not like my brain is going to magically be like, oh yeah, that's Katie from middle school. Like I'm never going to forget her. Like, I don't know who this person is. So I need to know where to find them when I go to do my follow-up. So I immediately put them in the talking to category. And then I go back to their chat and I'm like, hey, Katie, like good to hear from you, blah, 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 blah. And then say Katie's like, okay, well, I would like to do a three-day sample. Awesome. We get Katie set up with a three-day sample. And then I have a mini experience category. So then I have a category of people that I know I need to follow up with because they've got a mini experience. I also have a category of people that need to order. Like we, we need to get their order done. They're ready to order. They've got, you know, I've offered them a $25 discount. Like we need to get their order done. Maybe they, maybe they have to wait until Thursday. So I'm going to move them to the need to order category and I'm going to write Thursday next to their name, but at least gives me a list of people that I need. They need to pull the trigger. Like we're not beating around the bush anymore. You need to get your order in. Whether you told me you need to do it on Friday or whether you told me you need to do it after work, I immediately move that person from, from talking to or mini to needs to order. And then I have a list of ghosts. So I also have a list that I can move to people when they don't respond. And I use that list when I have a killer promo. Um, if I have a killer promo, I have an entire list of people and it's a very long list. You guys, I, I have an incredibly long list of people who've ghosted me. I don't let it bother me. I just put them on that list so that I can reach out to them if I have a killer promo. Um, and then I also move people when they order. Okay. So I have a list of people that have ordered and Trello keeps track of it in chronological order. So I can go back if I ever feel like, oh gosh, I feel like I had someone order last week and I can't remember who it was, but their order's probably there. Like if you're anything like me, those are the things that wake you up at two in the morning. You're like, oh my God, someone ordered exactly five days and seven hours ago and I forgot to follow up with them. Like those are the things that wake me up at night. Well, I can go back into Trello and I can go to my ordered list and I can see, oh yeah, it was Susie. I need to follow up with Susie and make sure that her order arrived. Okay. So it literally, it is essentially this in app form. And again, you can have different boards for different things. You can have boards for your post ideas. You can have boards for Ultimate Thriver. Okay. Say you want to keep track of everybody for Ultimate Thriver. Maybe you want to do some giveaways. You can have an entire board universe. That's what I call them for Ultimate Thriver. There's so many ways that you can utilize this app to keep yourself organized. And I just love the fact that you can just like poke someone's name and move them wherever you want. Like you don't have to create a new thing. You don't have to erase it and then start over. You can just, and you can add notes to someone's name. So maybe, maybe you want to keep track of, um, you know, something important about them. You know, maybe uh, Veronica uh, is asking about, uh, about thrive 
but she is a breastfeeding mom and has some concerns. Well, you can go into Veronica's name and there's a little card for her and you can put into the notes that she's breastfeeding. So then that way you don't forget and, and, you know, direct her the wrong direction. Okay. So it's a great tool for keeping yourself organized. So if you have a chance, um, take a peek at Trello and, uh, and, get familiar with that app because I think it's a great way to keep yourself organized. Okay, you guys, um, I'm just going to finish up on this thought and, and then I'm going to pass it over to Sky, who's doing our reading. Um, and thank you, you guys for listening to me rant and ramble this morning. Um, you, you have already done yourself a favor and done your business, a good service today by hopping on zoom. And I applaud you for that. Um, Be the leader that you want to be right now. Don't get into the mindset of, well, when I'm a 200K, I'm going to get organized. Or when I'm an 80K, this will be important. Or when I'm a 40K, it'll matter if I have a vision board or not. But right now, it doesn't matter to me. I'm only a 4K. I just started a week ago. Like, who cares? Okay, well, if you're a 4K who started a week ago, you should have a list of people that you're talking to about Thrive and you should have a plan of action for how many times you're posting. So you do have a reason to be organized. You do have a reason to be organized, whether you started yesterday or you've been doing this for a year and a half. You have a reason to be organized, okay? So the, so the best thing that you can do for your business is If you want to go 200K in this business, and not everybody does, some people only want their auto bonus and that is fine. Some people are just like, I just want a consistent like $200 a month, like in commissions. Whatever your goal is, that's fine. But it requires some form of effort on your part. You can't just like sit back and let it happen by osmosis. You have to work for it. So whatever your goal is, you start acting like that person who has already achieved that goal. And I say this to my team all the time, the people who are not even 4K yet, but who show up like 200Ks, successful and involved 200Ks, those are the people who will walk across the 200K stage, period, period. People who run their team like they already have their auto bonus, even though they are nowhere near their auto bonus, are the ones who will get their auto bonus because they act like it. They show up, they get on Zooms, they do self-development, they are organized, they are on track, okay? They are, they are checking in with people, they are motivating people, they are doing the do, okay? The, there is nothing more frustrating than a leader who expects other people to do the work for them. Nothing more frustrating than that, I promise you. I promise you, it is the least motivating thing in the world to have a leader who checks in on you, but they're not doing anything else. Okay. Like they're not signing up new customers. They're not signing up new promoters. They're not getting on zooms. They're not, you know, going live. They're not, they're not doing any of those things, but then they're expecting you to do it. Don't be that leader. Make sure that you show up, you do the do, and then encourage your team to do the do but don't ever expect and you know this is something that goes across in life my husband always says this he never expects any one to do something that he wouldn't do himself like if, if he wouldn't do it himself he's not going to ask someone else to go and do it okay that creates a culture for your team that is leadership from top to bottom Okay, so show up as the leader that you know you want to be and that you know you can be, even if that means starting very, very small. Maybe it's just doing a vision board. Maybe it's just getting a little bit more organized. Maybe it's listening to Atomic Habits by James Clear before the end of the year. Okay, these are small things that you can do that help you become a better leader. And then they just turn into a snowball effect where they add up and then come the end of next year. You could be sitting at 80K, 200K. Who knows? Like I said, you are all one person away from being a millionaire, but you have to be prepared for that person to walk into your business. And I'll tell you right now that an unorganized 
unmotivating and selfish leader is not going to attract that kind of person. So get yourself in the posture to receive the person who is going to turn you into a millionaire, right? Okay, that's all I got. Sky, I'm gonna hand it over to you. You guys, thank you for listening to me and hope you have an amazing week and Merry Christmas. All right, sounds good. Um, are we are we dropping any comments or anything for the morning women winner this morning before I go ahead and read? Yes, if you have not already won, drop me in the comments. All right, perfect. Okay, talk yourself back into it. Is there something you want to experience or need to accomplish that you've talked yourself out of doing? Maybe you can talk yourself back into it. Is it really so bad as you imagined it or have your thoughts just made it seem that way? <clears throat> Think what could happen if you took an initial step. Imagine the result if that gave you the courage and enthusiasm to take another step and another. Soon you could be well on your way. Soon you could have done it, have it done. Don't leave yourself wondering what might have been and regretting what could have been. Get out there even though the cold wind is blowing. Experience the full beauty of the world and of your life in it. Talk yourself back into those valuable opportunities you've been avoiding. Discover again and again how much good you can do by Ralph Marston. Thank you very, very much. Um, I appreciate everything that Lydia has given us as well. I'm going to drop some stuff in the comments with the replay. And Sky, could you go ahead and pick a winner, please? Oh my goodness me. All right. Um how about Marcella Mar Marcella's yeah. Galaxy 10. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't see it all. That's all right. Congratulations, Marcella. If you can please message me in Messenger. My last name is Cochran. C-O-C-H-R-A-N. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic Monday. Go out and motivate everybody. Let them know why Mondays are so fantastic.